Our planet Earth is teeming with life. To some, it's a miracle. But can science explain how all this came into existence? Critics have attacked the theory of evolution for 150 years. They claim it's full of holes, and the gaps reveal the hand of a creator. Who's right? We investigate the most explosive science question of them all. Was Darwin right or wrong? Absolutely. Other theory. Huh? The debate has never been more intense. Well, I think it's a war. It's a, it's a real battle between worldviews. We believe that the theory of evolution should be taught alongside the alternative theory of special creation. On this foundation here of, of creation, God's word is truth. Creation and, you know, any supreme being can't be addressed in a science classroom. There are those who believe that life on our planet is so complex that the only explanation is to say that somewhere behind it, there is a creator. On the other side are a group of men and women who believe that nature can create life's countless varieties with no outside help at all. They have a name for it, one of the most hotly debated words in our language. Evolution. One single word, one incredible idea, and almost entirely the brainchild of one man, Charles Darwin. The theory of evolution was born out of a remarkable journey. In 1831, the naturalist and explorer Charles Darwin embarked on a five-year voyage around the world. Along the way, he collected fossils, plants and animals. Back in his home near London, England, he spent the next 22 years piecing together a theory for how the great variety of life came to exist. Even in Darwin's time, scientists already knew that extinct creatures had roamed the planet in the distant past. Some were strange, terrifying beasts, unlike any that walk the Earth today. Others were more familiar, animals so similar to modern creatures that they had to be related. Could today's animals and plants be their descendants? Could one species change into another over time? Darwin thought they could. In 1859, he published his ideas in a book on the origin of species. The book rocked the world. In it, Darwin made three bold claims. First, that life was old and had existed for hundreds of millions of years. Second, that it started out with just one or a few simple organisms, which then evolved into the millions of species that exist today. And third, that this whole process of creating new species was driven by a force of nature he called natural selection. For God-fearing people, the inescapable conclusion was astounding. Life didn't need a creator. But was Darwin right? We're going to examine Darwin's claims one by one to see if they're true or false. If a single one of these claims fails, the whole theory will come crashing to the ground. First, we look at the mystery of when life began. Darwin didn't claim to know how life started, but he did say that it was old. He thought it had existed for hundreds of millions of years. But many of his opponents argue that life is young, that God created all living things within the last 10,000 years. So who's right? When did life begin? In the Western Australian outback, geologist Martin Van Cranendonk is on the trail of the world's oldest fossil. 
Fossils are the preserved remains of creatures that lived long ago. The fossils in this part of Australia are as close as we can get to an amazing moment. The moment when everything began. What's remarkable about this outcrop is that it contains the oldest evidence for life on Earth. These wrinkly forms are very different from what we'd normally see in a geological environment. They can only be formed by living organisms. These are fossilized stromatolites. Structures built by colonies of bacteria that lived in the sea. Biologists think that all life on Earth evolved from organisms like these. Even us. We're looking at here in front of me our great, 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 great grandfathers and grandmothers. Scientists are confident that these structures are the remains of living organisms because their direct descendants still exist today. Over 600 miles away, in Shark Bay, on the west coast of Australia, are colonies of living stromatolites. But how old is the world's oldest fossil? Will it prove that living things are old, as Darwin said they were, or young, as his opponents argue? To find out, scientists use a surefire method of dating rocks. Radiometry. By measuring the decay over time of certain elements within the rocks, they can determine their age to within 0.1%. When geologists put the fossilized stromatolites in the Australian outback to the test, they discovered that they were 3.56 billion years old. Scientists have now discovered dozens of fossils that are over a billion years old. On the first test, is life old or young? Darwin was more than right. Life is thousands of millions of years old. But how does he fare on the second test? Darwin said that life started out with one, or at most a few, simple living things. Over millions of years, these simple creatures evolved into new species, which then evolved into other new species. This process created millions of species that became increasingly varied and more complex. The creationists argue that life hasn't changed, that a creator created everything at one time, just as we see it today. So who's right? The best way to find out is to examine the fossil record. Museums around the world contain millions of fossils that reveal what life was like on Earth at different stages in its history. Because each fossil creature can be radioactively dated, we know when and in which order they lived. If Darwin is right, we would expect to find that the earliest fossils are of simple creatures, and that as time passes, fossils get more varied and complex. To visualize what creatures lived on Earth and when, imagine the whole history of life on our planet as a skyscraper, about as tall as the Empire State Building. The first floor represents the moment when the Earth formed, about four and a half billion years ago. And 91 stories higher, the roof is the present day. Each floor of the building represents 50 million years of passing time. 6,000 years, the whole length of recorded history, would be just 1 50th of an inch. That's the thickness of the coat of paint on the roof. The first fossil evidence for life appears three and a half billion years ago, on the 22nd floor. This is where we first come across stromatolites, and nothing else. Stromatolites are made by bacteria, one of the simplest of life forms. So life started out simple, just as Darwin said it did. But as we go forward in time, when do living things become more complex and more varied? For the next 1400 million years, or 28 floors of our skyscraper, little changes. The only life forms are simple, single-celled creatures. 
2.1 billion years ago, on the 50th floor, we find the first cells with a nucleus. The type of cell we see in 99% of living things today. From here, we have to travel all the way up to the 80th floor, 600 million years ago, before we find the first animals. Scientists think these inch-wide disks are the remains of cup-shaped creatures that lived on a muddy sea floor. They're similar to modern sea anemones. Finally, two floors later, life has really taken off. These fantastic creatures are from the Cambrian period, 500 million years ago. They are very different from the simpler life that existed before. They have heads and limbs. Their strange shapes and elaborate bodies reveal that life has become more varied and more complex.